Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to show you how to find the process covariance matrix, or I should say, the predicted process covariance matrix, because we already had the covariance matrix from the previous cycle, or in this case, from the initial conditions. Now we're going to predict it forward. To do that, this is the equation we're going to use. This is the third step in our process. Now the A matrix is the same as the A matrix for the state uh, matrix. This is equal to, we have ones across the diagonal, and delta t over here, and this, oh, this will be a zero, times the previous matrix, and the previous matrix was like this, it had 400, 25, 0, and 0, because we had eliminated the cross covariance terms, and then we have to multiply this times the transpose of this, when we transpose that matrix, we get 1 and 0, we have delta t and 1 over here. So that's the transpose of this matrix plus the error in the process of calculating the process covariance matrix. In this case, we're going to call that 0. Sometimes it's not 0, but in this case, we'll just call this 0 to make things a little simpler. Now, when we go ahead and substitute for delta t, that's equal to 1 second. This is equal to, this matrix becomes 1, 1, 0, 1, multiply times 400, 0, 0, 25, and then multiply times 1, 1, 0, 1 in this format. Let's go ahead and multiply these two together first. This is equal to, we get a 2 by 2 matrix. This is 400 plus 0, that gives me 400. This is 0 plus 25, gives me 25 over here. This is 0 and 0, goes over here, 0 and 25. We still have to multiply it times this matrix, 1, 0, 1, 1. And when we do that, we get the following. We get 400 plus 25, that gives me 425. We get 400, that's 0, plus 25, we get a 25 in here. 0 plus 25, we get a 25 in here. And 0, 25, we get a 25 in here. Okay, now notice that we have those cross terms again. Remember, in the previous video, we had 100 here and 100 there as a, cross, as a cross term. This would have changed those terms a little bit, but since we didn't include it in the previous video, we're not going to include it in this first example right here. We can simply ignore the cross terms and then say that this is approximately equal to, and the matrix then becomes 425, 0, 0, and 25. However, this is now slightly different from what we had before. Notice in the diagonal term, this was 25, yes, but here we see a difference now. That used to be 400, this is now 425. This is the adjusted or the predicted, what we call process covariance, covariance matrix, which we'll then use in the Kalman gain in this go around. So each time we recalculate that predicted covariance matrix to adjust it for what we need it to be to get more accurate predictions to the future where the state will be or where the position and the velocity will be of the thing that we're tracking, in this case, an airplane. So that's the third step in the process. Stay tuned for the next video. We'll show you the fourth process, or I should say the fourth step of the process.